Hi, welcome to Marker Board Video. Today we're going to talk about free fall again. Uh, the other day we talked about how fast something's going when it's in free fall. Today we're going to talk about how far it goes. And I just want to remind you that how fast and how far are two totally different things. How far is the distance and how fast is the speed. So we're going to talk about how far something is going. So this chart we had before, we had elapsed time in number of seconds, 0 through 5, and the speed that it went. And if you don't remember how to calculate it, go ahead and look back on that video. Today we're going to add this column, which is on distance, how far it goes. So let's think about it. You take a, a, a Barbie doll and you drop her off of a very high building. And at the one end of one second, you know she's going 10 meters per second. She's gone 10 meters per second for one second. And so naturally you might think she's gone 10 meters. But remember that at one second, 10 meters per second is her instantaneous speed. It's the speed that she's going in that tiny little instant of time. And instantaneous speed is not average speed. So if we average those two together, we find out that she's actually gone 5 meters. And you can do the math and continue on so that you find at 20 meters, I'm sorry, 20 seconds, she's gone 20 meters. 3 seconds, she's gone 45 meters. <laughs> and all the way down to 5 seconds, she's gone 125 meters. So if instead of calling time a number, we just give it a letter like T, the speed that it's going is acceleration times time. Now that's assuming we start when we just drop it and she has no initial acceleration. We're going to talk about velocity. We're going to talk about that in just a minute. Velocity is acceleration times time. And the distance she traveled is this, ex this equation right here. It's 1 half times acceleration times time squared. It's a square function. And because we're talking about free fall and she's just being dropped, the acceleration that we can assume is acceleration due to gravity, which as you know is 9.81 meters per second squared depending on where on earth you are. And we're going to round that to 10 to make the math a little bit easier. So acceleration in this case could be g, which is 10 meters per second squared. Now, what do we, why do we use free fall? Free fall is a really easy way for us to show you um, the relationship between certain things. I want to show you the relationship between elapsed time and distance, elapsed time and velocity, and of course distance and velocity. And then we put that all together and we have elapsed time and acceleration. So we're looking at all of those pieces put together. If we use free fall, we can find a really easy way to do that. I am also assuming that we are neglecting air resistance. We'll talk a little bit about air resistance in a later video and a lot about air resistance in a much later video, but for right now we're assuming there is no air resistance. So you drop her, she falls. Okay. So um, the relationships apply to objects that are not in free fall. Now, so in other words, we have these equations, right? We have these equations we came up with. So what happens if it's not in free fall? What happens if you're in your car? Or if you're in an airplane? Or if you're throwing a ball? Do those same relationships apply? Well, they can, but not always. And so we're going to talk about when they apply. There's two conditions that have to be met for those two equations to be true for objects other than free fall. The first thing is initial velocity, vi, v initial, v at the very beginning is zero. So when I drop that Barbie, I'm just dropping her. I'm not throwing her. I'm just letting her go. She has no initial velocity. I didn't use units here because initial velocity, if it's zero, it's zero. It doesn't matter if it's miles per hour, feet per second, or, or meters per second. Zero is zero. The other thing that you have to have is you have to have a constant acceleration. Now you know when you're in constant acceleration. You can feel it on your body because it's, um, it's smooth and steady. It's not jerky. You're not going like this. You know how sometimes in a car you go like this or go like that, right? This is where it's smooth and steady. And um, if acceleration is constant, initial velocity is zero, then you have these relationships. Then these two relationships are true. But you need to have both of those conditions in order to have this, these equations um, be true. Later on we're going to talk about what happens when your initial velocity is not zero. There's just one little piece that you add to these. Not too hard, but we'll talk about that later. So again, when you're trying to figure out how far something has fallen, you can use this equation. Kind of cool, so if you drop a penny in a wishing well, you can actually determine how far down the penny falls before it hits the water by knowing how long it took to, help to hit the water. You don't even need to know the mass of the penny. That really is unimportant. So free fall, how far?